Welcome to Table Talk with Paula and Libby. With our host, Paula Arnold. Our co-host, Libby Patton. Please join our special guest, T. Ebony Terrain, as she shares the first part of her powerful testimony. Well, welcome to Table Talk. Libby is gone. She's gone um, out of town, and I'm just not, really not happy. She went down to Florida, and she's just laying out in the sun and doing a few things, but I'm really happy for her. We're just unhappy that we're not there, but we're blessed that she can be there, aren't we, T? Yeah, yes, we are. Well, we have today with us, her name is T. Ebony, <laughs> and I just love her. She is such a bright, young, beautiful uh, millennial woman. <laughs> She's always full of the Word of God. I mean, I get a little intimidated when I get around her because one thing, she's so young, and then she's so pretty, and then she's just so smart, and she's just so full of the Word. So today, I, you know what, I didn't really even go into a lot about what she's going to talk about because I trust the God in her, and I trust uh, a man that she sets under. I love Pastor Finley. Amen. And I know that what she's got to say has come right out of the heart of God, come right out of the Bible. Yes, nothing's been added, nothing's been taken away. And so what are we going to talk about? Now, her name is T with a little apostrophe, Ebony, E-B-O-N-E-Y. And people call her T, but I'm allowed to call her T-T. Mm -hmm. So, Miss T-T, what are we going to talk about tonight? Okay, well, today we're going to talk about um, redemption, and we're going to talk about hearing the voice of God and the role of the Word of God in um, His redemption of our lives. And can you just tell me exactly what does redemption mean? Okay, well, um, I did a little research, and in Greek, it means to to buy back, all right, to purchase I told you there out. No sense <laughs> me studying, honey. She's already in the Greek. Go ahead. And it in means to what? To buy back. Buy back. To I'm purchase like out, mm -hmm. and in Hebrew, it means to claim, to rescue, to act as a kinsman redeemer. Act as a, say that again. Kinsman redeemer. Oh, that's good. And that's exactly what Jesus did on the cross. He wow. he brought us back from the grips of Satan. And um, because of what Jesus did on the cross, we're heirs to salvation. And so I just praise the Lord because I really believe that for many people who felt like they lost a lot of things in their past, things haven't been going the way that they thought it should go, that this is the season of redemption. This is the season of God restoring everything that the enemy has taken from our lives. That is so good. You know, I feel like this is the year of um, the, like in Malachi, it says, it talks about the windows of heaven are open. Mm -hmm. and, and not just financially, but I take that as to be a lot of things. But I feel that same thing, mm -hmm. just in another word, that the windows of heaven are open. And this is a year and a time that God is allowing us to come back mm -hmm. from our sinful ways that we've been in yes, and, and our ways that we haven't really pleased Him. Mm -hmm. But He still loves us so much, mm -hmm. He wants to give us another chance. Yes, ma'am. And so this is great. Mm -hmm. So what uh, scripture are you reading from? Well, uh, the scripture, the last time I was in the show, I talked about Isaiah 43, 18, verse 19. And it says... Um, Remember not the former things, mm -hmm. neither consider the things of old, for behold, I shall do a new thing. Mm -hmm. Shall ye not know it? Yeah, I want to read it in the Amplified. Okay. <clears throat> it says, do not earnestly remember. I mean, earnestly means just do not earnestly. Take, take it upon yourself to remember, to not, do not remember the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Let those things go. You know what I tell people sometimes? You know, things happen and you get these things and they're just like a, a burden up on you. Mm -hmm. And I just say, baby, let it go. Mm -hmm. Because in a year from now, you're never going to think on it. Mm -hmm. But let it go now. Mm -hmm. And that's what God's saying. I love that. Mm -hmm. And then in 19, it says, behold, I am doing a new thing. Mm -hmm. Don't you love it when God does new things? Yes, I do. Now it springs forth. Mm -hmm. When I think of that, I think of, of a child. I'm, I always like to have, I like to be childlike with God, mm -hmm. you know, and mature. I like to be mature and we got to grow. I'm not on the milk. I'm, I mean, I'm still on the milk, but I do eat the meat. You mm -hmm. know, we never arrive. Mm -hmm. But I still in my mind like to stay childlike. So mm -hmm. when I see that word spring forth, I think of a child or when I was little jumping on the bed. Mm -hmm. You know how you jump on the, you jump and it springs you mm -hmm. forward. So I love that. 
Do you not perceive and know it and will not give heed to it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Yes, ma'am. Is that not good? That means, honey, if you don't have anything to drink tonight, if you're dry, just not only in your body, but spiritually, mm-hmm. God is going to make a new way. He's going to make a way for you even in the in the desert, mm-hmm. in the wilderness. Mm-hmm. That means in the your worst battle. Yes, ma'am. So that's wonderful. I'm excited about that, yes, too. Yes, And the wilderness um, and the desert are two places where it seems like the impossible can happen. I mean, if you think of the desert, there's not a lot of resources. No. If you think of the the wilderness, it's not a lot of resources. But God is going to do some awesome things in our lives in impossible situations and places. And so originally, I was on both of those verses. But now what I say over myself Um, which is a part of what I want to talk about is, God, I thank you for making a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So I don't see it. I don't know how you're going to do it. That's not up to me. But I know that you're going to make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert for my life and for the life of other people too. And you know what I've learned, T.T.? Mm -hmm. That when we're relying on God, sometimes we have faith, I think, in our own faith. Mm -hmm. We're not having faith in God, Mm -hmm. you know, the true living person of God. God is alive and and living. Mm-hmm. And he's real. He's not untouchable. He's, mm-hmm. he's reachable and touchable. And, you know, we know him. Mm-hmm. And he's here with us, just like me and you are sitting here. Mm-hmm. And um, he, sometimes I think in the impossible, when we lay ourselves to the side mm-hmm. and we let go of our worry mm-hmm. and thinking about how God's going to do it. God, you're going to do it this way. God, I need it done this way. Or God, are you going to do it this way? Mm-hmm. And most of the time, He doesn't do it any of those ways, Mm -hmm. but he does it a lot better than we could ever imagine. Right. And I love that about him, don't you? Yes. And that's why he's a redeemer. And the Holy Spirit is is my best friend. Um, He's my comforter. He's my teacher. He's a God. And and when you start talking about God and you make it personal um, through the Holy Spirit, it just yeah. makes it so real. See, I like that about you. Mm-hmm. See how you just brought that out a little bit more. Mm-hmm. You make it. You you become real with the relationship through the Holy Spirit because mm-hmm. that's part of God, and that's what He's here for. Mm-hmm. He's here for us to have that relationship with us. Mm-hmm. He can be our best friend. He can be our comforter. And some people will say, "Well, how can that be?" And I used to be that way. <clears throat> I remember one time, you know, the Bible says, "Love your Lord God before anybody." Uh, better than anybody and, and my mother was living and uh, I just I just told Jesus I just said Jesus I know what your word says I know that your word says I'm to love you more than anybody but you know what I, I can't touch you I, I can't feel you I can't see you I mean my mother's here in the flesh mm-hmm. and this is and 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 so Finally, he said to me, but I'm more real than that Mm -hmm. because this is just flesh. Mm -hmm. And God is real. He can actually, you can actually feel him. You can actually sense him. You can actually sometimes smell him. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he can become so real to you, more real than what me and you are. And I mean, you can even sometimes, I can sometimes just feel his arms Mm -hmm. around me, Mm -hmm. holding me in the peace that surpasses all understanding is greater than any peace I've ever felt. Yes, ma'am. So for you out there tonight thinking that, well, I've never had that or I've never uh, thought that. I've been there and I've felt that way. But I'm here to tell you tonight that God is real and the Holy Spirit is here to help you, to lead you, to guide you. He can answer all your questions. You know what? I'm getting, I like to go get so dependent upon the Holy Spirit. I'm not a very good speller. Mm -hmm. And so... If my sisters are at my house, I'm always saying, Lynn, Lise, how do you spell this? Um, but last night they went in there and I was writing something on Facebook and trying to encourage somebody. I love to encourage people and mm-hmm. lift them up. And so I needed to know how to spell a few words. And on my computer, for some reason, it didn't have spell correction. And I was like, well, Holy Spirit, how do you spell that? Just two or three words instantly. He just gave them to me. So isn't that good? Yes, ma'am. I mean, just the little minute things mm-hmm. is good. And there have been times when um, I felt the wind of God, and that's a part of the Holy Spirit. I felt his wind across my face, yeah. um, comforting me and letting me know that he's present, he's there, he loves yeah. me. And so so you can actually feel and touch mm-hmm. him, and he can speak to you. It's, it's, not, it's not always, and it's, 
less likely to be audible. Mm -hmm. It can be audible, but that's less likely to be. But when you open up this Bible right here, you know, this Bible is the Word. Yes. And it's the Word of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. And this Word become flesh and Hallelujah. became Jesus. Yes, so, ma'am. Uh, and then you can feel the, the inward witness, the small inward witness inside yes, uh, of you, of Jesus, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. And um, so he is true. Yes. And that's, it's important because a lot of people are looking for things to happen in their life as to be understood. But as believers, we have to spend time with this word. We have yes. to fellowship with this word um, because the word is spirit and life. Yes. And when you're spending time with the word, you are spending time with the Holy Spirit. You're spending time with the Lord. You're becoming like him. He is renewing you. He's transforming your mind. And the things in the past that you lost, yes. God will redeem. Oh, and yes. the more you spend time with him, he'll give you new visions and new ideas that were different yes. from the ones you had in the past. Which brings me to this, you know, it was a period in my life where I just felt like nothing was happening the way I thought it should in the order that I thought it should happen. And I know we talked about this last time, but after I graduated from college, you know, you're 18. I'm going to go to college. 22. How old are you now? I'm 35. Oh, so you might be past a millennial, are you? A little, I'm a little bit there. I can still <laughs> hold, I can claim it a little bit. But you know what? I'm going to make you take a break because we want to give the audience something to think about what okay. you're going to say. Yes. Before we take a break and then we'll be right back. Yes, ma'am. Paula Arnold Ministries is pleased to invite you to the Kentucky Capitol Rotunda Prayer Conference Wednesday, April 12th from noon to 1. Everyone is welcome. If you need more information, please call Paula at 502-226-0181. Well, welcome back. Let's talk about where you was coming. You know, I, I said you was just barely a millennial, but you're still one, so that's okay. Uh, so you, you're out of college, and you're 18, and, um, and that's been a while back now for you. Yeah. <laughs> Long time oh, back for me. <laughs> but, you know, when you grow up, especially as women, we plan our lives. But don't you like being 35? Um, Didn't you enjoy 18, but don't you enjoy your matureness now? I, if I could do it all over again, I would like to be 28 for some odd reason. Me too. I love 28. I'd like 28 to have stayed 28. Yes. I know. Mm -hmm. Because it's like still in your 20s and you're old enough yeah. and you're not really 30, but you can right. still enjoy I being 20. I love 28. Mm -hmm. I know. And now at, you know, 48, I'm still not doing too bad. No, I'm well, really, you look good. Yeah, I'm not. I'm over 50. <laughs> but we're not going to talk about it, mm -hmm. but 50-ish. So mm -hmm. go ahead. So let's get back with it. Yeah, because as women, we plan our lives, right? So 18, go to college. 22, graduate. Mm -hmm. Hopefully by then get married. 25, have your first kid. Oh, yeah. And then life hits and you're, you know, my age. And none of those things have come to pass. And the world of social media where you're scrolling down and people are on their third kid. And you're like, okay, guy, what's going on here? Hello. Um, and then other things that I've lost, um, friends that I've lost, um, just different hurtful, painful seasons in my life. And um, I, in 2012, I was filled with the Holy Ghost. And we talked about that. I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that was the beginning of my life changing. And um, in this season of my life, God, and I will say it started with, you know, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But then fellowshipping with the word. The last time I spoke with you, we talked about Isaiah 43, 18, 19. And I will proclaim that. That was my scripture. Um, our church did a fast in January. And ever since after the fast, God has been excelling things in my life. He's revealing who I am, what I've called to do, um, different business and entrepreneurship endeavors. Like he's just rolling those things out. But I couldn't handle that. You know, in my old self, back wow. when I was in my 20s, even my late 20s, I couldn't handle it. No. And so, um, but I... And I see such a big difference. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just be honest with you. You come through that door, I thought, do I know her? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, but yes, I do. But you're so different. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got the anointing mm -hmm. and the glowing, beautiful uh, look in your eye. Mm -hmm. You got the spark in your eye mm -hmm. and those beautiful lips mm -hmm. are just shining bright. <laughs> and I mean, you are just beautiful, just not from... 
beauty, but mm-hmm. just from the God that's upon you. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, we're made in the image mm-hmm. of Him. He's dwelling in us. We should look like this, mm-hmm. the, the, the happiness and the smile and mm-hmm. the excitement. Not all, you know, sometimes we have down times, but this is just glowing on mm-hmm. you tonight. And it, and it comes with spending time with the Word of God and speaking it because the Word is spirit and life. Yeah. And um, as I was going to say, you know, the enemy really tried to steal some things from me. He tried to steal my identity. But once I was baptized with the Holy Spirit, I got a new identity, a new name, a new walk, a new talk, new endeavors, new goals, new dreams. And um, the Bible says, John 10, 10, that um, the thief comes to steal, kill, 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 and and destroy. destroy. But God comes that we may have life and have it more abundantly. And so I praise God for that because um, Zoe in Greek is life. And in Hebrew, it's called Kaleum or, you know, something similar to that. But um, basically it extends for the first woman, Eve, right? Eve birthed humanity, right? And so what God is doing after I received the baptism, I received a new birth, a new walk, a new talk. And that is what he's doing now. He is redeeming a lot of our identities and we're walking in our newness in Christ, new endeavors, new walk, new talk, new look, new, new ventures, new opportunities. And you talk about you talked about springing forth a few minutes ago. And as soon as you said that, I said birthing, because when things spring forth, it's like a new birth. See, me, here's what I've called you to do. Here's what I want you to do. And now you're ready to do it. Yes. And you know what? I believe you are. There's mm-hmm. been such a change in you. Mm-hmm. Um you know, um, I don't mean this in any wrong way, so mm-hmm. don't take it. Cause you're, okay. But the last time, you keep saying the last time you was here, the last time I can barely remember you being here. Really? Yeah, because <laughs> you was nothing like this. Mm-hmm. And I mean, there's just a whole change. I yeah. won't be forgetting you mm-hmm. after tonight. Yeah. I mean, I didn't forget get you all, but I didn't. Yeah. I just don't remember you having this, you know, uh, anointing yes so, and you're just so mm-hmm. happy and upbeat i love it the last time i was here um it, i believe it was the birthing process and the calling has birthed forth and you know what sometimes i've never had a baby so i don't know but i've been told that the birthing can be painful yes and the last time, I believe I was going through a painful season, yeah. but it was the birthing. It was yes, the beginning. You had the baby yeah. now. <laughs> and now you had the baby now, yes. honey. And it is a lot yeah. better. Yes. It's going and, you know, mm-hmm. and it's your spiritual baby. We're not talking about a baby, a physical baby. We're talking about a, a spiritual baby that God's gave you to mm-hmm. uh, grow and you know you're calling you're anointing that's what we're ca- talking about yes, you're you're growing and, and you're going into what the things that he has for you yes, and it's exciting mm-hmm. I see it on your face mm-hmm. I'm going to have you back again soon okay I'm yeah excited. okay what else are we talking about well in that <clears throat> our church did a fast in January we did a Daniel fast and before we did a fast this is a part of God birthing out what he's called me to do there was a prophet that came to our church and um, he gave a word and he basically said that God had, that I was an intercessor mm. and he, um, now, it, did that go with your heart? Yes, it did. Okay. It truly exemplified what I was doing in mm-hmm. my secret place. I mean, I, I just want to say this because I want to tell you something. If some man or I don't care who they are, if some man of God tells you something and it don't go with your heart, mm-hmm. don't let it change your life. Put it up on a shelf. Let it sit there. Pray about it. And if it goes with you eventually, fine. If it doesn't, just leave it up there. Because if it's God, it will come out. So he said that you were... Yes, that I was an intercessor. And that went with your yes, heart. Yes, It was like confirmation. It was, it was 100% accurate. Yes. I mean, the way he... Um, displayed me praying was on point the things that he said that through my through my prayers my family um would come back to their calling and you know i have a family who loves the lord and um i grew up in church and he was so on point because that was on my heart and um then i would say after that another man who um is in the office of an apostle and a prophet came to our church and Mm -hmm. basically gave a prophetic word and said that God had called me into the office of a prophetess. Oh, right? you go. And so this was also confirmed from mm-hmm. um, my <clears throat> apostle as well as Prophet Gaston so, as well. So why don't you tell the audience uh, what an apostle is? 
Yes. What a prophetess is. Yeah. So a prophet and a prophetess are, are basically people who are uh, the mouthpiece of God. The prophetic. Um, yes, the prophetic. They they speak what God um, is saying at the hour, at the moment. And I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I'm still growing in that role. Um, yeah. I'm not out here saying I'm a prophetess, blah, blah, blah. I am at the student level in this. Right. I am seeking out God. I'm praying. I'm seeking his face. And I've done research on my own. And I feel now that I am a prophetic watchman. Oh, um, and I say that to say, because God confirmed that to me through the word. Okay. And he confirmed it to me through Isaiah 62. And um, basically in Isaiah 62, it said that, you know, that God will put watchmen on the wall mm-hmm. and um, watchmen are people who are on guard and watchmen are also people who are intercessors. They see something that come up, they intercede for it, and then they proclaim it to the leadership. And that's what I've been <clears> doing. <throat> and so it just confirmed at this season in my life, like my purpose, my oh, identity, so, and what God and has called that me to you do. Feel so good. Yeah, it does make me feel good. But the office of a prophet is a mantle, and it it comes with the pros and the cons. But um, I feel like God has been preparing me all my a life lot. for it, and now my life makes sense. Well, praise God. <laughs> that is so good. I need a high five for that, sister. And what I like best about that is that you know a lot of people when they're told that. We're going to run out of time here in a minute, but we're just going to have to stay to do a second show. You do mm-hmm. have time, okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, a lot of times when people get something on their life like that, they want to step in it too quick. Mm-hmm. But I like what you're doing. You're being very sensible about, mm-hmm. cool about it. You're not just, you, you've sprung forth, you've mm-hmm. had the spiritual baby, mm-hmm. and now you're starting to learn and study mm-hmm. about. Um, <clears throat> Be how to be a prophet and what that means and what's that meaning. You're just not jumping forth and no. getting into it too far because you know that it's a serious yes, thing. Yes, it is. But it's excitable. But I have a, a little prophecy I feel led to tell you. Okay. But our time is running out, so they're just going to have to wait next week <laughs> to hear what it is. But I've got something I've got to tell you from the Lord. I do walk in the prophetic mm-hmm. some. Uh, not, I'm not going to say all the time, but mm-hmm. sometimes I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're going to talk about that. But anyway, this is Table Talk. We've had a great time. This is T. Ebony. She goes to church at uh, Heavenly Outpour. Yes, ma'am. Her pastor is a great man of God, Pastor Gil Finley mm-hmm. and First Lady yes. Finley. They are lovely people. I love them. Um, I'm so excited. Arlene is our media director, and she gets... Um, creative media director so she has really got me some creative person here today and I thank Mm -hmm. her for that but this is table talk and God bless